you know that no episode of Sonic Flare could possibly be complete without a nice cup of coffee. So cheers to you all. Let me enjoy this sip. Mmm. Freshly ground beans. There's nothing like it. <clears throat> With that, what's on the agenda for today? Something very special. Something that I've wanted to do, well, since last week when we got the flu and the nasty bug that's been going around. What is it? Let's check it out. And what it is, is something quite extraordinary. But first, a quick update. <clears throat> Studio A, as you guys know and saw a couple of videos ago, is being worked on. Drywall is up this week, or last week, I should say. Waiting for the taper to come in. The electrician uh, to finish stuff off. Get the AC pump and all that heat pump installed. Then we've got flooring, the trim, and then paint. And then, oh glory goodness, then we're moving in. So I can't wait. My guess would be probably, let's call it three weeks. I am beyond excited. Anyway, but today's video, what is it about? Well, it's about something very special. Uh, no, this is not sponsored by Impex Records. No, this is not sponsored by Elusive Disc. These are my purchases that I made. And of course, that gives me the freedom to say basically whatever the heck I want. I'm not beholden to anyone. Um, which really shouldn't be a factor anyway. But I think in this case, I'm trying to make an extra special point because this is really cool stuff. What is it? <laughs> Something very, very special that really does not come up uh, more than once every blue moon. <clears throat> and that is, on one hand, the Jennifer Warren's famous blue raincoat crystal disc. And on the other hand... The same album, Famous Blue Raincoat, but now reissued in the ultimate, dare I say ultimate, maybe penultimate, probably ultimate edition of Famous Blue Raincoat, of course, the one step, and it is truly a super duper packaging. I am really grateful for <coughs> Elusive Disc and Impex Records. Um, for having created such an awesome package with, uh, with great inserts, a little storyline behind it. It's on three discs, 45 RPM. And what I, I think, you know, it's kind of like this love hate relationship that I have with this music, which is really to say, oh, by the way, I completely forgot. There's one more edition that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> which is this sort of mid-90s TDK MAXG tape uh, that also contains Flame is Blue or Famous Blue Raincoat. Now, you may not, uh, you may be asking yourself, wait, what the heck? Famous Blue Raincoat never came out on TDK MAXG cassettes. But, uh, and of course it didn't, uh, but something more about that later as this has become my sort of new process um, 
of evaluating streams of all things. So let's uh, let's get into it. So you may be asking yourself, wait a minute, famous blue raincoat, crystal disc. What the hell is a crystal disc? And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the crystal disc, first of all, I, I gotta say, as deluxe a packaging as the One Step is, this has to be the most elaborately packaged compact disc set that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, seriously, it takes the cake. Uh, beautiful, um, just gorgeous packaging, really. So you basically get two things. Porter, stop it. You get two things. You get, on one hand, the standard edition uh, high quality disc or ultimate high quality disc, which is comes packaged in this lovely uh, cardboard setup. It's got, you know, the standard um, inserts for, for a CD, the booklet, etc. Talks about all the stuff. Uh, then, of course, you've got the standard polycarbonate disc, which is right here. And uh, it happens to be a gold. Oh, no, actually, it's not. It's not a gold disc. Sorry. Uh, standard aluminum disc. Um, yeah, ultimate high quality, etc., etc. Uh, made in Japan. And then the specialty part, which is the crystal disc. So the crystal disc, you may be asking yourself, well, what the heck's a crystal disc? And it is made by the largest CD pressing plant in Japan. They invented this new, um, well, it's not new today. When it came out, it was new. Uh, process of creating a disc compact disc compatible with any and all CD players that uses glass substrate instead of polycarbonate substrate to create the actual disc. And what do you get? And of course, it's got a, a gold reflective layer instead of the aluminum reflective layer. Uh, and it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's see-through. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can see that on the camera a little bit. I can see it. Ah, there it is. Ooh, there's the camera. And it's quite heavy. Uh, I mean, that's the very first thing you notice. It's glass. Um, and, you know, I got to tell you, I mean, it's, first of all, it's cool as heck. It's, it, it, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's the most beautiful looking compact disc I own, without a doubt. And, yeah, it's uh, by um, Impex Records, of course. They, they reissued this on a gl glass uh, disc, crystal disc as they call it. And, you know, what's, so what's the story? Uh, of course, it comes with this little gift certificate, which is kind of cool. Uh, mine happens to be 54 out of 100. And uh, Memory Tech, which is the company that I, I just mentioned in Japan, uh, has only made a handful of these discs over the years. And it's incredibly difficult to manufacture. It's incredibly expensive to manufacture. When I was talking to AB uh, in, in getting prepped to make this video, one of the things that she was telling me is, um, as she recalls, they make about six a day or something like that, um, which is kind of crazy. And it's obviously a very laborious process, very manual process. And as a result, it's very expensive. The... This version of Famous Blue Raincoat uh, costs a whopping. Sit down, please. Put your six-point racing harness on because it'll knock you out. Sure knocked me out. Uh, <clears throat> $900. Yes, you heard that right. This crystal disc is $900. It's unfortunately out of print already, so no longer available. There are even more expensive uh, titles out. I recall reading somewhere there was a uh, classical reissue of some uh, works by, I don't know, uh, I think it was Beethoven maybe. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. That was around $2,000. But this particular one is $900. And you're asking yourself, well, wait a second. What the heck? $900 for a, for a compact disc? Are you insane? It was one of the th those things where, you know, it, it's, it's, you got to have it because it's so damn unique. I mean, I, I don't think I'll ever, 
in fact, I'm pretty sure I can say definitively, I'm never going to get another crystal disc. It's something you just kind of own because it's just crazy. It's so crazy that it's just, well, crazy. That said, let's get into uh, the album. Of course, I'm not going to get too much into that album. Famous Blue Rainco, Jennifer Warren. She used to be a backup singer for Leonard Cohen and in the 70s. And uh, they kind of chit-chatted, obviously. And the idea was spawned in the late 70s of creating a covers album that Jennifer would sing. And it was digitally recorded. I believe on a Sony 3324, if my memory serves correct, which is a you know standard 80s digital multi-track recorder, and mixed down to tape, I believe at 30 inches per second, um, which was then that mixed down tape uh, was used to create the Impex uh, reissue that came out a couple of years ago. Um, which I think was the 30th anniversary reissue. Then, of course, they used that. Uh, and by the way, Bernie Grunman owns, or stores, I should say, the collective catalog of Jennifer Warren's on tape. And so Bernie Grunman mastered uh, all of the Impex editions that are out and about and available to purchase, including this latest, which is the One Step, of course. So the the beginning, the beginnings of these various reissues is really the same, which is that famous or infamous as some might even call it mix down tape, analog mix down tape. And so you really can't say it's an analog record, of course, because it uses a digital source, but it is um, certainly an interesting sounding record. And by record, I loosely mean that as, as just the album itself. Um, yeah, I have a sort of love-hate relationship with it, I'll be perfectly frank. Kind of like Patricia Barber, kind of like Diana Krall. Uh, the simple reason being that, you know, you go to a show and invariably someone somewhere is going to be playing it to death. Of course, it's been used by many audiophiles as demo discs. Uh, and, and rightfully so. They're amazing sounding discs. But in dosage, right? I, I do think the artists, uh, you know, Jennifer Warrens, Patricia Barber, Diana Krall, they're incredibly talented singers. And I don't want to get them to become earworms for me where it just becomes like obsessive and I just can't listen to the music anymore. All I hear is their voice. I'd like to listen and enjoy when I do listen to it. And so long story short, I don't play these often, um, but they sound damn good. They really, really do. So the first thing I did is uh, I queued up the crystal. Well, the first thing I did actually, I queued up the standard analog or excuse me, um, aluminum CD. And, you know, for lack of better wording, it sounds like just about every other CD. The CD player in use was my Einstein CD player, which is now going on gosh, I want to say 18, 19 years, maybe even 20 years of age. <coughs> Pardon me, still runs and functions fine. I use it as my reference CD player. Um, yeah, it's a good sounding CD. And then something interesting happened. I put in the crystal disc. And lo and behold, I'm not kidding. So one of the benefits of the crystal disc using a glass substrate is I guess that the pits um, are much clearer to read by the laser. They also use a metal stamper for the pits. Um, and so everything as far as the mechanics of the disc itself are obviously on a much, much higher plane than the mass produced aluminum uh, polycarbonate substrate standard compact disc that you would get lo and behold I, to 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 not make it sound as obvious but you really do hear the improvement quite dramatically um everything you know not to sound cliched but everything becomes much more in focus there is just much more presence there's much more shove there is simply more music there when you play back the crystal disc. When I compared the uh, digital stream 
from title to uh, either one. It's sort of, I, I, I guess, it's, it's almost like an in-between step. So that's why one of the things I started doing years and years and years ago is I, I started listening to Tidal. And when I hear something that I really want to get into, I actually make a cassette copy of it because it improves the sound. Not always, but many times it takes the digital edge off of the stream, as I call it. And, you know, you sit there, um, I, I remember listening to, this was years ago, uh, a Matthew Halsall recording, and by golly, y'all, it really did improve the sound quite dramatically to the standard title stream. And so I made an analog copy of it, and, um, it, you know, like I said, the, the cassette, believe it or not, splits the difference somewhat between the crystal disc and the standard aluminum disc, um, you, you get a little less of that digital glare that the analog disc has, or excuse me, analog, that the aluminum disc has, but not quite to the level of focus that the crystal disc has. And then of course, you play the one step, and you know, I gotta say the one step as amazing as the crystal disc sounds, the one step brings it even a few more notches closer to analog perfection. And, you know, you, again, 45 RPM discs, uh, they use that uh, SV900 vinyl formula, uh, which is the same that the guys at Mobile Fidelity use. So it's, it's a almost, uh, it's a see-through disc. <clears throat> um, and, you know, Bernie did such an awesome job cutting this record. Uh, super quiet. Of course, you know, it's so funny when I say super quiet in reference to a vinyl disc, when you then talk about a compact disc or a stream in direct comparison. And so, yes, by analog record standards, this is a quiet disc. By digital standards, it's obviously noisy, right? I mean, and, and you, of course, you can hear that the, you know, for, for the first, you know, split second or so before the music kicks in. That said, I really will say this is a very, very quiet disc. Uh, no pops and ticks on my copy. And it's, you know, it's just fantastic. Uh, comes with this gorgeous porter. Stop it comes with this gorgeous booklet that is absolutely beautifully done. Gosh, these guys are driving me nuts. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. Absolutely beautiful illustration. Gorgeous print quality. Uh, they really did an outstanding job on this three-disc set. Um, Jennifer Warren's good-looking girl that she was back in the day. Now she's a obviously an, uh, a, a lovely elderly lady. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, you know, fantastic. And of course, you know, a couple of pictures of Leonard Cohen in here. And I got to say, as good as the crystal disc sounds, and I'm going to try to be very careful to, to state that do I believe this is the best compact disc that I have? It's certainly up there. It's certainly up there. You know, obviously, if if this album would have been a complete analog recording uh, or even a, a modern um, digital recording done to perfection, you would probably get even more sound quality out of it, right? It's certainly one of the best sounding discs that I have, that I own. Um, but you put on the, the Impex One Step, and again, it you, you have just that analog foundation, analog goodness that the crystal disc edges up against, but the One Step delivers. And so definitely a must buy if you have any of the previous versions, I have the previous Impex version of this. It's buried somewhere in my uh, rack of LPs that I have yet to unbox. 
at some point I'll, I'll, I'll get it out and I'll be able to do a proper shootout. But for now, I will say the one step is fantastic. Um, you know, if you dig this record, it's, it's fantastic. So go out and get it. I mean, as far as, you know, music and all that, I would say the standout feet, the standout, um, record or <laughs> records. I'm still under medication, I guess the standout, songs really are um you know burn on a wire man when that bass kicks in gosh it pulsates it energizes the room um night comes on absolutely gorgeous um ain't no cure for love of course famous uh famous cohen song um ballad of the runway horse another great great song yeah, it's um, it's fantastic, and and like I said, packaging is absolutely first rate quality, and I guess that's it. Enjoy. If you haven't already bought the 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 Impex, uh, I would recommend you go out and get it. It's limited. I don't believe that there's ever going to be another famous blue raincoat edition. I shouldn't say that. I really shouldn't because you know that there's going to be someone, if not Impex, someone else is going to come out with some new version at some point 10 years from now. <laughs> but for now, today, and for the foreseeable future, it's probably as good as it's going to get. With that, thanks for tuning in. Hope this was helpful and enjoy the show. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and we'll chat soon.